Hi, this is Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Sacramento, California. And I've got to first apologize to everybody. I know I haven't put out videos in a long time. That's because I've been super busy with my workshop tour and all my work in general. But I'm back to doing it, so I'm going to be doing my first video in a while today. We're just going to do some basic editing. We're going to go over some techniques that might help you and really just kind of help you solidify the whole concept of doing these bracketing and blending shots and masking and things like that, window pulls, things like that. But I want to just tell everybody to please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, please use the Adorama link. It helps me provide you with these free videos. Um, we've got a lot of new things coming. We've got the podcast, um, Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast I do with Brian Berkowitz, an architectural photographer out of New York. I'm doing my workshops. I'm going to still be doing some next year. I've got the podcast, and we've just got some really exciting things coming up. So please, subscribe, thumbs up, comments. I always answer. And uh, just anytime you reply back and say we're, we're providing you good information and education, that makes it all worthwhile. So let's get it back to the editing, and I'm going to show you, try and explain what I'm doing, and hopefully this will help you, especially the people that are just getting into this. And again, these are all just concepts, and I want you to grasp the concepts, but if you have any problems, please feel free to leave a comment and a question. Let's get into it right now. So, um, as in my description, I'm just going to go over some shots that I did the other day. Actually, this was yesterday. So it's fresh in my mind. Sometimes with my videos, I am videoing, I'm editing things that I haven't, I shot like a year ago. So it's really hard for me to remember. So I'm going to try and really break this down to make it really clear to the people just getting into this. And again, I want to emphasize that these should only take a minute or two to shoot and should only take a minute or two to edit. So we're not talking about these long drawn out processes. Yes, when you are beginning, it's going to be harder and longer, but stick with me and I promise you it'll get faster and easier. Okay, first shot is I like this composition, but I will point out one thing. This is the delivered final image. One thing is you notice the distortion from this lampshade on the right is so much bigger than the one on the left. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you one thing you can do. I'm going to leave it as it is, but one thing you can do if the distortion is too bad is just crop it so you're just cutting off part of the lampshade, and that really helps with the distortion issue there. The other thing, too, I want to show you is that I was doing, um, let me get here with the shot. I originally did the composition with two chairs here, one chair in camera and one chair over here. I found that I just didn't like this chair here, so I just pulled it out, and then I got this composition, which is a little better, more open. This is my ambient shot. So we're going to go for this. Is the Here is the final shot here. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with our ambient shot. And what I'm going for here in my ambient shot is this is straight out of camera. And it's actually a little dark, and I'm not crazy about the color, but I'm going to choose this because it gives me good overall exposure or luminosity, and I like it. So I'm going to put a one star there. And I really want to recommend that when you people start getting into doing compositing, you're going to have a lot of frames, and they're all going to look the same. So please, once you identify the images you want to use for your composite to bring into Photoshop, be sure you use some kind of a starring or a num numbering system to keep track of them. Okay, so I've got my ambient shot here, and I've got a flash shot here. And I like this flash shot, although it looks very flashy. I think there's some good parts to it, and I have a good window exposure, so I don't need to do a window pull. And really, everybody should know, window pulls are only needed when you need to do them. We, our goal is not to do window pulls in darken mode if we don't need to. So this one is going to be the ambient shot is at um, one quarter second, and I am on my 19 millimeter tilt shift. Nikon 19 millimeter tilt shift on my Nikon D750, which is the, the camera I chose that day because uh, I wanted to really uh, knock it out of the park for the client. And I find that with a tilt shift, I get a little bit better uh, composition. I will say, though, with the low roof in this building, it does look like I'm really cutting off a lot of ceiling. So I might change my judgment next time to lowering the camera a little bit. But 
I love the tilt shift so I have the freedom to change my composition. So we have our ambient shot. We have our flash shot, which we're going to use. And that's all I'm going to use here. But I want to say one thing. I want, right here, I shot with the lights off. Because look what happens when you're shooting with the, with the lights on here. You're getting a lot of color pollution. So what I did here is I'm going to use one ambient shot with the lights off, a flash shot with the lights off, and I'm going to use an ambient shot with the lights on. And I'm only going to use this ambient shot for the parts that I want to mask in the warmth that I want. I only want the what I want. I don't want the, the room to dictate what I do. I want to control the lighting. So that's why I have these shots with no flash on them. So let's start out with our flash shot. And I'm going to go to my um, full bump or my special sauce. And that's going to bump this up to quite a lot right here. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the white balance because it's a little warm for me. I'm going to go right here because I think that's looking a little bit grayish, neutral gray. Or you can go white in the background. Oh, by the way, this flash shot is 1 50th of a second, which is perfect because it's not too fast. It's just perfect. It is killing the ambient. Um, so I'm really controlling the colors like that. And I'm getting a good window shot there. So 1 50th, F7.1, 19 millimeters, and ISO 400. Okay, so I want, I've got my special sauce here. And I'm going to use my white balance eyedropper tool here. And I'm going to click it over here and watch what happens. I got it a little bit more in line with the color I want. But I'm going to bring back a little bit of warmth because it really killed the warmth there. There we go. I like this. I think the color is true to the room. It is looking very flashy, but that's why this ambient shot is going to help. So what I want to do now is highlight the flash shot, highlight the ambient shot, and highlight the shot for the lights. So I'm going to go to my ambient shot now, and I'm just going to do my... I'm going to do my ambient yellow out or ambient orange out. I've got different names. Oops, wrong ambient shot. Here we go. This is the one I want. So I'm going to go, um, see again, you're, if you don't, you don't put a star by them, you're going to get confused. So I really recommend getting some kind of form of identification for the images you want to use. So my ambient yellow out, which is a preset you can find on my YouTube channel, and that actually made it look really nice. And I'm just going to bring up the exposure a little bit. And you want to really identify the issues and the good parts. So for flash image, it's really good in color. Very flashy, though. So it's the direction of the lights wrong. I'm missing any logical shadows here. So what I want now is my ambient shot. I want to use the parts that I like. So I'm going to use all these really nice nuggets of beautiful ambient shot here. So I think I've got that. I'm actually going to bring, make it just a little lighter again. There we go. So I've got that there and it's pretty close color. I'm going back and forth. It's a little bit yellow. So I'm just going to go bring it a little cooler white balance. There we go. So you can see this is what I like in my ambient shot. This is what I want in my flash shot. Now let's highlight the ambient shot for the window uh, for the lamp warmth so this is perfect and all i have to do is just use this alone i might actually just make it a little brighter and there we go so i've got all three things here highlighted and now i'm going to go right click i click on the image right click edit in open as layers in Photoshop. And this gives me an opportunity to say, again, I apologize for not keeping up on my videos, but stick with me. I'm going to be back and I'm going to try to do three videos a week. And uh, hopefully that will take place. I'm just so darn busy right now. Um, it's really hard for me. So subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't forget, use that Adorama link. Helps me make these free tutorials. And just keep, keep asking questions and Check out the podcast and the groups and all kinds of things. So, okay, so now everything is lining up in Photoshop and I've got three layers. So, the first thing I want to do is highlight all three layers. So, I have the top layer um, clicked and I'm going to hold down Shift and click on the bottom layer and it, it highlights all three layers. So, I'm going to go up here, is in Edit. I am going to Auto Align Layers because I now auto-align all my images. 
because any movement will screw up your alignment. You just can't do it. And this looks pretty aligned, although here, if you look right here, let me go over here, right here, you'll see a little banding. So that's showing you that it was slightly out of alignment. Okay, now, next thing I wanna do is I know that my warmth shot, I'm gonna turn all these off. And again, you may want to name your layers. So I would name this ambient, I would name this one flash, and I would do this one, it's my third image, and they come into Photoshop in chronological order, and the third shot I would do for maybe lamps or warmth, okay? But I know what it is, so I'm just going to bring it up to the top, there we go, and I'm gonna turn it off, and I'm gonna turn on my ambient and my flash layer. And now I'm gonna click my ambient layer right there, okay? And I'm gonna hold down Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and you're going to add a layer mask. So let's go to it. Okay, so I've got now, you can see that the ambient shot went behind the flash shot. So what I'm doing is I'm in white, which is going to paint in or reveal what's underneath. And what's underneath is the ambient layer. So I'm gonna bring the ambient layer towards the top and I'm gonna use my paintbrush and I'm gonna use zero hardness and I'm gonna go 6% flow, okay? I'm in normal mode, 100% opacity, okay? And uh, right here, I'm in normal mode, and I'm just gonna go start painting in the ambient where I want it. So this, again, is the ambient shot without um, the lights on. So let's bring in a little ambient there. And again, this may look like, why are you even doing this? It's very subtle but it is the look that I have become synonymous for or my agents hire me for. So I'm just gonna add in a little ambient down in here. Look at that, bringing in the ambient goodness. Look at this table, it's very flashy, and you can see the shadow underneath the table. Oops. So I'm just gonna make my brush the size I want, and I'm gonna mask out the shadow there. I'm gonna mask in some ambient goodness there. There we go. I'm gonna mask in a little ambient goodness back there. Yeah, looking good. A little bit here too. Maybe on this side of the couch and in front of the couch. Okay, let me bring this out so you can see it all. And actually, I think I'm just about done. And in reality, that would take about a minute or two you can see now, though, how good that is. Watch on three. One, two, three. There's the flash shot, and there's with all the ambient. Again, flash. That's with ambient masked in. And personally, it's a huge difference to me, although it's subtle. Huge difference. Okay. Now I'm going to highlight my warmth shot, and I'm going to click on the layer. And I'm going to add a layer mask, same thing, option on a Mac. Hold it down. And now what I want to do is just paint in a little bit of this ambient warmth. See it? Right there. That's all I want. I'm going to do a little bit on the, on the shade. There you go. That's it. That's all we want. It actually bled over to the uh, window, so I'm going to hit X. And watch over here. It's turning from white to black. I'm going to erase a little bit of that ambient right there because it went over. Really subtle, though, but it's actually okay. Now, I'm going to hit again. I'm going to hit X because I want to change it to white. And I'm going to go back to the back lamp and just bring in a little warmth. Now, I don't even need to do that. I don't think I delivered it with the warmth. There we go. Look at this. Just a little bit there. Here's the bottom line. I want to put in the amount that I want. I don't want the light dictating what I'm doing. Actually, I'm going to erase a little bit here. Okay, and there I go. I love the image. It works for me. Um, and I've got the beautiful ambient goodness um, masked in. Again, it's very subtle. But if you've been watching my channel, I think you value what it is. And we didn't have to do a window pull. We got the three layers, and this, again, would take me about a minute to do. So I'm just going to close this out. I'm not even going to save it, and I'm going to go on to our next image. And our next image is in the same house, and this is the final image. Let me just make this a sole image in the frame. There we go. 
Okay, so we have a regular standard image and, uh, you know, nothing fancy, but this is really easy to do the way I do it. And what I want to do is let the ambient do the heavy lifting in here. Okay, so I'm going to start with my ambient shot. Here we go. And this ambient shot is one eighth of a second. We're still at all these shots are going to be f7.1. 19 millimeters because I am using the same tilt shift and ISO 400. You don't have to be using a tilt shift. You can shoot at F8 if you want and you can use a lower ISO. But honestly, the reason we use ISO 400 and F7.1 is because it makes all of our lighting more effective. It gives you more power, effective power to the flash. So what I want to do here now is this is straight out of camera and this is the ambient shot I like and it's going to give me everything I need out of this and then I'm going to go to our flash shot and here is the flash shot I'm using and this flash shot is 1 80th of a second so I am exposing not only for the window but I'm exposing for these lamps a lot of people ask me how do you expose for lamps well you just change your shutter speed or your exposure and you go for the amount you want and everything else has to be lit. So I'm going with 1 80th of a second and back here I've got it's kind of dark back here and instead of putting a light there I want to see if I even have a frame with a light. Nope I did not put a light in there so I was going to let the ambient do the heavy lifting so I'm going to highlight the we only have two frames we're going to use in this image. One is that, this flash image and one is this ambient image. Now let's go back and forth and see what we're going to do. First of all, I'm taking my flash shot because I tend to adjust my flash shot first because that's what I base my whole edit on, the flash shot. And I'm going to go back down here to the full bump and it's going to show me I've got a nice shot here. And you know what? I could probably deliver it the way it is, but it's a little flashy. I don't like that the flash is coming this way. In, look at your ambient shot. Which way is the, the lights coming from this window? And granted, it's completely blown out, but I'm not worried about it. It's giving me the beautiful ambient uh, directionality of light with the ambient shot, but I'm going to be able to mask it into here. So I've got my color. Everything is fine with this flash shot. And I'm going to go over to my ambient, and I'm going to first do get the ambient yellow out. And I'm just going to bring down the exposure. And the thing I'm really looking for in this exposure here is I want to use the light in here to mask it into my flash shot. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But everything else in the ambient, I've got all the good parts I want. And I've got the shadows. And it's just the life that comes back to the image with the ambient. And being shooting this way just makes it a lot quicker and easier, I think, um, using the ambient uh, to do the lifting or to bring back the shadows. So without any further ado, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So again, as I'm waiting, thank gosh, it takes me 30 seconds to take 20 seconds to take images into Photoshop because I'll say, I want you to subscribe. I want you to listen to our podcast, Shooting Spaces. Uh, it's great. We're really going on with that. And please subscribe to the channel and use my Adorama link uh, because that really helps me out. I really, it makes all this time worthwhile. And uh, again, I'm going to be up really doing a lot more videos for you. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the bottom layer with Command held down. I'm highlighting both layers, and I'm going to add a layer mask. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jumped a little too far forward. I'm going to highlight both, and then I'm going to go into Edit and Auto-Align Layers. There we go. I do this so much that I get lost sometime doing it. Okay, so I'm going to take my ambient shot, and I've highlighted it. And now I'm going to make a new layer mask holding down option. And there we go. Now I want to check here. I want to hit, I want to make sure it's on white for reveal. So I'm going to hit X. You could also just click here. There you go. So I'm going to make it white. And I'm sure that this is still the soft paintbrush. 
6% flow, so let's just get right into masking in the goodness. So I tend to go where my main problems are, and I think I've got to deal with the exposure in the kitchen. I'm just going to mask in some of the ambient. Now, I will always say that if I put a light in that kitchen, it's going to be a better quality of light, but when we're really in a hurry, ambient, if you can make the ambient a similar color, I think that works fine. Here's the... Uh, it turned off and that's just ambient so it is a little bit do you know what you might not think it's perfect and then I I can totally say put a light behind this wall and bounce it there but this letting the ambient do the heavy lifting really makes it easy so now let's get into getting rid of this back of this chair let's do it right there and now underneath and on top of the chair let's go here Let's go bring in a little bit of ambient here. We don't need much. There we go. There we go. A little bit on the ground here. Okay. I like that. Okay. So we've now added in. And now I've got a glare on this table. In another video, I could show you how to fix that, but it doesn't bother me. And again, this is real estate. Uh, if I wanted to take care of that, I could have easily overpowered this and uh, not had to worry about it, but I'm okay with the way it is. So let's turn off that ambient layer and let's look at going back to the flash. One, two, three. So I think it's well worth doing. And actually these lights are looking a little bit flash, a little too intense. So a little bit more ambient there. Okay, good. So I like that and I'm gonna move on. So that was a really quick one. Okay, I'm not even gonna save it because I got it already delivered, so I don't need to save it again. There's the final image, okay? Here we go, now let's move on to another one I picked out, and this will be our final image, because I don't want to go too long in this tutorial. And again, this is nothing new. All of these techniques I'm doing are in all of my videos, but I know that seeing the same techniques worked on, worked on in other images can help you really grasp how to do this, how to do this work. Um, and how to make it work quickly in your workflow. It really is most important just to get your concept. How, what are we doing? Why are we doing it down? Okay, so we have this image right here. And now I actually really like this image. I exposed for the flash for the window here. And this ambient light right in here, I think it's just perfect. I don't think there is any reason to put a flash in here. Actually, I might have put a flash there. Let me look at my flash layers. No, I don't think I did. I think that is all that is all flash in here with ambient uh, in that room. So let's go now to our ambient shot. Whoops, wrong shot. Come on. Okay, here's our ambient. And I'm going to leave the ambient. Look at that. That's straight out of camera. But this is exactly what I want. A lot of people have trouble um, identifying what it is we're looking for in the ambient shot. The three things we can do with an ambient shot is, for me, is one is luminosity or exposure, which is my main concern with an ambient shot. I want to make sure I've got good exposure all over. So I'm actually really happy with this. The next thing luminosity is going to do is it is going to give you the shadows that you like. Look at this shadow right here. You can compare it back and forth to the flash image right here. And the flash image I wouldn't deliver because man, it's just really, really flashy. So I'm gonna take this here and I love the way this looks. I'm even very happy with the white balance here. But remember, I've got these lights turned off and I don't find any reason for me to turn the lights on. So I've got that there and everything's looking good. So I'm now gonna go to my flash shot and I'm going to use my full bump or my special sauce. And I got a great, very flashy, but it's a very strong flash layer, which I'm okay with. You can look at this, the histogram here. It's looking a little bit high. So I'm actually going to use that histogram and bring it down to about, about there. That looks pretty well exposed. And we're looking good over here. So, and actually to tell you the truth, I think I did add in um, flash layer uh, it flash in this room, but I'm not going to go into that now. I digress. Okay, so let's turn it into a Photoshop file. So we're going to right-click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. 
And as it's opening up, I will tell you a few more things. Some exciting news. I am uh, dipping my feet further into the Sony world. I just ordered my Sony a7 III, and that's going to be my new camera for weddings, real estate, real estate architecture. I'm really excited about it, and I'll be doing a review on that camera coming up. So here we go, and I just love this ambient shot. It's going to work really well. So as we're doing, we want to highlight both images, go up into Edit, and Auto Align Layers. Normal, I mean, Auto, OK, it only takes a second, so Auto Align your layers. Okay, I'm making my layer mask here. Same thing as I did before. Now I want to mask in the ambient goodness. And I'm going to go back into that room. I'm just going to bring a little bit ambient in there. There we go. A little ambient up here. Very subtle. A little bit here. There we go. Now I want to get the ambient in here. There we go. Oh, yeah. And that's it. Actually, my window shot is perfect and good. And uh, let's just turn off the ambient layer. You can see one, two, three, back to the flash. I mean, the ambient. This is the with ambient induced, and this is just the flash layer. So very subtle stuff. Even look down at the shadow from the center council. I'm just going to turn it off. Look at that. Little things like that are what going to set your photos apart. Okay. <clears throat> now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all a shot I did yesterday that was only just one exterior for a magazine. And what this is allowing me to do is to, you know, I got to find the images. Hold on a second. Here we are. I needed to get uh, a magazine cover. And I am just here. And I am on a, let's go to this one. I'm on a 16 foot pole. This is my Nikon D750 with my 16 to 35 um, lens, Nikon lens. And I am putting it up on my. Uh, pole, my 16-foot pole, and I just want to say that this is really, really helped with this angle. Now, I don't think we're going to use this because it's not landscaped, and I might shoot this again for the for the agent, but this is probably what I'm going to use, either here or this might be the shot. There we go. So I just want to say the 16-foot elevation is really helping with what I'm doing, and uh, it is something that I want everybody to check out my YouTube tutorial on building a pole. It's something I emphasized in my workshops, and I just want to have everybody be aware for under 50 bucks, you can build a pole and get a beautiful shot like this. Now, so thank you all for hanging out and uh, checking out what I'm doing. Again, um, really, I can't do it without you, so add your comments and uh, questions and uh, check out all the other stuff that's going on. But most important, stick with what we're doing here because your photos are going to look better. You're going to get much faster at it. It's going to get much easier. I promise you that. And, uh, you know, you'll be making more money shooting better things eventually. And uh, it's not all about real estate. It's about design photography, architectural photography, and any direction you want to go. So Rich with Rich Bob Photography, Sacramento, California, saying thank you for subscribing and being one of my subscribers to my YouTube channel. I really, really get so many kicks out of the people all over the world that I've been able to help. And uh, letting me know I'm helping you really makes me feel good. So, and also use that Adorama link. Uh, if you're going to buy something, use the Adorama link. It's going to be in the show notes. Thank you very much. Rich Bomb, Sacramento, California. Say and see you later. Bye.